Hi, today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the first study guide um, and study guides in general for our Humanities 115 course, um, Critical Thinking um, at JCC. And mainly I want to help you figure out what I'm doing with the study guide, what you should do with the study guide, um, what I expect for the homework, um, and how it's going to help you on the actual exam. Okay, so kind of da 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 da. Um, the first thing I want to kind of go around, uh, go on about study guides in general. Um, my view of a study guide is all the possible things that could be on the exam. Um, as a student, making my own study guides were probably one of the best things I ever did for myself. Um, I'm a real kinesthetic learner, um, and I'm visual in that order. Um, so I write things out. Um, sometimes I draw things around them, whatever, um, make them pretty. But the main thing for me is um, taking notes. Um, honestly, if I'm listening to a lecture or um, I read a book or whatever, if I'm not taking notes, I'm really not paying attention. Um, so, and I know for a lot of folks who are audio learners, taking notes get in the way. Um, for an exam, though, I think, especially for an online exam, you have access to your book, your notes, your stuff. So the more prepared you are, the better the test is going to go, the quicker it's going to go, all that kind of fun stuff. So, um, what I do on on a study guide is, um, and study guide one is already posted, um, others may already be posted, it depends on how far along I am when you see this video. Um, one of the things about the study guides is that I want to make sure that I've given you kind of a weed down of all the stuff we've looked at in the chapters we're covering. Um, sometimes that's a lot of stuff, um, a lot of technical stuff or a lot of definitions and that, and I want to kind of weed things down a bit so that you spend your time working on the things that are really going to matter. Um, I try to make sure what I put on the test are things you're going to use more often in real life. Okay, so that's kind of the other part of that. What I do um, as far as the study guides that you're going to see is I give you the list of key terms that might be on the matching. Um, I weed those down on the test to about 20, well always to 20. The big words um, things that I cover in the slides and in the lectures that I say you really need to know this definition, um, like critical thinking and argument and worldview, that kind of stuff. Um, so those are on there. On the test, you have to write out or type out the actual definitions from our book. Please don't Google this stuff. Um, you're going to get the wrong answers a lot. Um, all of this in the book, all of, the, all of those are also on the PowerPoint notes. Um, I know you can copy and paste. And um, I want this to be useful for you. I also want, to, want it to be kind of a showcase of what you've learned so far. So that's kind of the taking seriously. And they're worth 10% of your grade piece. Um, so for the first test, well, for all the tests, you'll have matching. You have 20 matching. You'll have all the big words. It's the only part of the test that's cumulative. Um, and then you'll have a couple other sections. One section is I call it applications. Okay, so here are the big concepts we have in this section, um, and can you tell me what they are? First of all, can you use them? Um, I'll give you some samples of things to kind of work out those processes and things with. Um, so it's not just definitions, it's not just writing out kind of regurgitation what you've already learned. Um, it's, okay, now use it on this particular example. Um, and that happens in every single test. Um, there's also um, usually a couple of technical things where you have to show me how it works. Um, in the first exam, um, there are some things about argument patterns. We're going to walk through those. Um, and then I always give you a couple, either a couple of what I call mini essays in which I'm looking for a paragraph, sometimes two, um, on this particular topic. So it's not a full-blown essay, no intro, no conclusion, da da da, whatever. But it's just here's a paragraph about how this works, okay? Um, do your own work. Shouldn't have to say that out loud, but every semester I have a couple folks who don't. Um, do your own work. Do not work with somebody else on the test. Um, if your answers are exact, especially on the um, essays and stuff, I will question you about it. Um, this is kind of a silly thing, but do your work with integrity. We're all good, right? Um, so for the first, the first study guide, um, here's my list over here. You'll have 20 matching um, from the list that's on um, the study guide. The six big words, all those will be on there. And then we have kind of three sections. Um, the concepts and processes go together. Okay. Um, in the first one, we had three 
step things. Um, four steps for judging arguments, three steps for finding implicit premises, and then five steps for diagramming arguments. Um, all three of those will be on there as what are these. And then the judging arguments and the diagramming arguments will make, have you kind of apply that to a particular little paragraph argument. Um, make sure you walk through the steps like you've listed them, give you the benefit of the doubt. Um, those are worth eight and ten points, eight to ten points apiece. Um, and then the argument patterns, um, you're going to make your own example, not mine, not Dr. Vaughn's, um, not from the book. Um, make up your own examples um, for the four um, valid forms, modus ponens, modus tollens, um, hypothetical syllogism, and disjunctive syllogism. Okay, so make up your own examples um, for those. Make sure you label them. Um, there's going to be another section of labeling um, that is just like what we do in the book. Um, make sure that you're looking at the component parts. Make sure you're not adding or subtracting from them. Um, and that's kind of how those work. Um, the last piece on the test um, is a mini essay. Um, and actually it's um, from page 40, that um, box that we talked about in the lecture um, about prejudice and bias and stereotype. Um, leading to racism. And so what I want you to do with that particular section is tell me the definitions. Okay, they're in the book. They're also on the PowerPoint lecture, on the PowerPoint notes, sorry. Um, they're in the lecture, but they're in the PowerPoint notes. And then I want you to explain their logical links. How does somebody get from having a simple bias to being racist? Okay, um, this is not just your opinion of how that happens. Please make sure you're using the vocabulary from chapters one through three. Um, things like critical thinking and peer pressure and that kind of stuff. Um, that one's worth 20 points. Um, the test itself, I think, is worth 150 points-ish. Um, so it's a, it's, a good, it's a good chunk of that particular test. Um, every test will have the same components, obviously different questions, um, except for the big words. Those we'll just add to those as we go along. Um, this first test has six. The last test will have either 13 or 14, I forget. Um, so we add to that as we go along. Um, walk through the study guide. If you have questions about the study guide, please let me know. Um, what happens is how this gets counted as homework. Okay, That's always kind of a, a weird thing. Everybody needs to study in slightly different ways. And so I don't want to reward one type of studying over another and you know kind of diss that one. So whatever you do to study for a test, let me know what it is. That's the extra credit part. Okay? If you write out all your definitions, if you reread the the, um, the sections, you listen to the lectures again, whatever. Whatever you do, make sure I know what you do so I can give you extra credit for that. What you have to do is a little bit of practice for the hardest questions. Okay, And so in the integrated exercises at the end of that section, um, I'll have you do three or four or five um, to kind of practice for what I consider the hardest part of the test, the, the application where you're actually going to use the information. Um, those will be listed at the bottom of the last page of the study guide. Um, those will be what's listed on homework. Um, that's called your study guide practice. Um, that's the actual homework 20 point grade. Um, anything you do extra beyond that, that's your extra credit. Um, and it's the one, I think it's the one part where I actually let you go above 10%. Um, so I've had students get 27, 28 points um, for their study guide, so it helps a little bit with homework grade. Homework and, and um, well, a lot of your points can be higher than 100. Um, it's always possible to get more than 100 on a test. If you do extra work on the test, um, or you your essay is phenomenal. It's you know very thorough and wonderful, and you use, you use the right vocabulary and all that. You get some extra points. Um, on this one, I think that's the only place where there's extra points. But as we go along, it gets better. Okay. So if you have questions about the study guide, please let me know. Um, I'd be more than happy to help you along with that. Um, make sure that you're prepared for the test. Um, I have it up as an electronic test on Blackboard. You go through, you do your thing, it's done. I have to go back and grade it. Um, Blackboard is a little squirrely about grading tests. Um, 
if you don't put the exact same thing, spaces and all, that I put on my answer, um, it counts it wrong. You get zero points. Um, so everybody fails, um, which is not good for morale at all. Um, so I leave it. Um, I leave the, the actual answers blank except for the matching. That's really the only one that it grades. Um, and even then, sometimes if I mess that up, I can fix it. Um, but everything else I grade manually, um, so you have to wait until I get to them. Um, as far as that goes, I will get to tests and homework um, usually within two or three days of you posting them, sometimes the same day you post them. Um, I try to get current every morning uh, with what was posted the day before. Um, it doesn't always work that way, but usually. Um, and I know tests are a big deal, and so I will grade those on Mondays um, as soon as everybody gets things done. Um, if you're late with things, that's another part. Um, there is a due date. There is a due time. Um, everything's at 11.59 p.m. Um, that particular day. Um, if it shows up as a, the next day, um, my policy is that I take 10% off. Um, so you still get to turn in things late, but it's going to be a problem. If you know things are going to be late because, whatever because, let me know. Um, most of the time I'll negotiate with you, hey, um, if you can get in by Tuesday morning, I won't count it late, or if you get it in by Friday, I'll only take off 5%, something like that. I try to work with you as much as possible. I know being a student these days is not your only gig, um, and so I want to be as open as I can for those things. So um, let me know if you have questions, um, and happy testing.